it, it's a it, it's a really exciting time yeah. because we haven't uh, Dan and I haven't seen each other for about seven years. Yeah, uh, we worked together about twenty five years ago. He was fourteen years old, so now it's a different experience. And, to but be I'm the same height though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the show always seemed just so fun and really kind of captured. I mean, it seems like you're looking through this through like you know a fourteen year old's perspective. Yeah. Um, I mean, was it just a show? fun to film it and shoot it and everything? Oh, absolutely. It was like, uh, we had, we were like a little family. We had our little, our little bunks and our little, I mean, you know, every, it was, it was a blast. It was a lot of fun. It was really fun because we got a chance to, uh, throw food. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, uh, toss kids in the lake, uh, pull pranks. Uh, it was really, it was really an amazing time because we, we got to, we got to got, pull a lot of stunts on, on the kids yeah. themselves as, as well. I, I didn't really get th that many. I sort of came out unscathed a lot of times. I well, think Ugg got, I got the, the I think Ugg, Ugg, yeah. Ugg got the worst of he it. He got the worst of it. So I feel like um, this is a show that people just really remember from their youth. Talk to me a little bit about kind of the staying presence with that, how it's been able to be so relevant. You know, I, I think that there was a, at the time that the, the sort of, you know, I guess they're the 30-somethings now, were of that age, there really wasn't that much to, there wasn't a ton of cable, you know, like you either watched regular TV or you watch Nickelodeon. That was sort of the way it is. So that's, you know, they didn't have, they didn't, we didn't give them any choice. Uh, <laughs> I, I think, that, I, I think um, the show has been able to stay around because we were doing kids in a kid's world and kids were making their own decisions and they were finding their own identity at the time. And we were also presenting kids in sort of a, in a different way. They didn't have their hair combed all the time. Uh, these were kids who were, were able to have successes and we also showed them having their failures too. So we showed a lot of the the, the joy of growing up and also some disappointments and I think kids were able to identify with with, with those characters and so uh, we had uh, a different character for sort of each kid I think you'd sort of pick which one you liked you could either be you know Bobby Budnick or you could be uh, uh, you could be Telly who was the the athlete or you could be Dina who was who was into clothes and and, and into so everybody had their own their own entrance into the show that is kind of what I remember so much about the show that, you know, there was a character for everybody you would even know. Who in, were you? In your Which class. one were you? So <laughs> I feel like it was a combination, like given the day, right? <laughs> right. There, yeah. You know, there was there was ZZ who was into the environment. So that was a nice it was a nice way for kids to, to, to think about the world and think about. Very progressive. Yeah, it was, it was, it was you know, forward for the time, I think. <laughs> yeah, I really think it was forward. Why do you think that? I mean, was it, did Nickelodeon kind of just allow um, you to be that way at the time? Nickelodeon wanted us to uh, to present kids in in a more realistic way, and so we were we were able to have characters that that had um, different facets to their character that, that they were they were able to uh, they, they were able to find the world through their through their own their own their own their own points their own, their own uh, direction, and so we were actually able to have a character like Bobby Budnick who was actually mean to other kids, mm -hmm. you know, and, yeah. but. But you, but you actually learned in your in your yes. own way that you couldn't do that all the time. Right. So it was nice. It was you know there, you know in real life kids encountered bullies, mm -hmm. and so we showed that there was a bully and he had his own problems, but he also had a soft side to himself yes. that he was he was, he was <laughs> discovering. Very hard. So how do you guys like being in Austin? Coming here. Austin's awesome. Yeah. Austin's Austin. a beautiful place. Yeah. This yeah. Is, you, you, it's a yeah. it's a, it's a th great you know, city. It's great. So thank you for for inviting us and having us here. Yeah. Really. And I still get the song stuck in my head. Camp. Oh yes. <laughs> Did you ever lose that? No, you it's once it gets there. in, once yeah. it gets in, it can never yeah. be erased. Okay. Yes, I think that, that uh, I, I wrote the lyrics for that, and my friend Ed Alton wrote the music. I did. Yes. Oh wow. Yes, yeah. and, I, and actually, uh, a sort of a little secret here is I was Dr. Khan, who was the yes. uh, the, the never seen. The never seen. Oh ne wow. ne Yeah, Dr. Okay. Khan was the never seen camp director. So. And now he's seen. Now I'm seen. So now, yeah. yeah. Yeah, now it's, now it's a reveal. Now we know, yeah, and we know the secret behind the song. That's right. Okay. That's right. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much. Thank you very much. Take care. Okay.